Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for all of you being here. This is, I think, not only a very important conversation we're about to have, but one that is fascinating because there is a history in the state of Michigan that you are all more aware of than I, as only being here for a couple of uh, mm. decades. But we have watched the boom and bust cycle that has gone through in this state time after time after time. And the question that we're trying to talk about today is, how do you get financial stability? Before we get started, in addition to thanking you, I'd like to thank the Chamber for inviting us all here for what I think has been a very positive meeting up here. I've heard some more cooperative talk uh, this week up here than I've heard in a lot of years, and I think that's very positive. So congratulations uh, to the Chamber and to all of you for participating in this. Let's just start. If we're going to talk about being financially stable, I think it's a good idea to see where we are today, starting from some basis level. So I'm going to start with you. You're immediately to my right, Mr. Mayor. Tell me about your city, about where you think you are financially, and to the degree that you know where other municipalities are, and just try to set the scene for us today, because in Flint, as you and I have talked about, there certainly are challenges, but there also have been uh, some big strides forward. Yeah, well, it, it has been a very difficult uh, 10 years. Let's talk about that. The, the city has been uh, taken over twice under different state laws. Uh, we've gone through two recessions. The property tax base is 40% of what it was 10 years ago. And of course, as local municipal governments were heavily dependent on a local property tax base. Uh, we're now at the point, uh, because we were a much larger city uh, many years ago, larger city government, more city workers, uh, we have over 2,000 retirees. We have about 500 active employees. So try to do that math. Mm. It's, it's very, very difficult. So over those years, and I came into this office in 2009, the bottom of the recession, uh, wanting to move the city forward, and the stability is the, exactly the right word because you have to get to population stability, you have to get to financial stability uh, in order to create the conditions that you need for long-term economic growth and prosperity, which is what we all want for our communities. Uh, we have uh, cut our personnel levels by 60% from where they were 10 years ago. I mean, we, and we're not alone in this. We're, we're an extreme case, uh, but municipalities all across the state have gone through extraordinary restructuring. If you look past the last 18 or 24 months and you look at what's happened over the last decade, extraordinary amount of restructuring. Uh, so we need to you know, have this conversation about how we work together at the local level, the state, county, uh, and our private sector so that we can have stability in our communities. That, that's what I'm committed to in Flint. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, there are a lot of issues we have to deal with uh, in our communities as well as at the policy level. Quickly before I, I go to you, uh, Mr. Ficano, I'm not skipping you, Director, but I, I want to kind of get the, the view from the municipality to the county and we'll get to the state. But when you talk about your property tax being 40% of what it was, yeah. is, is that, which is the larger problem? The devaluation of property or simply property is being abandoned? It's a combination and that it's two ways to look at it, but those are related phenomenon. Uh, we have fewer people living in the city, uh, fewer units with people in them, and because of that, you know, weaker demand, older housing stock. So, I mean, there's a lot we need to do with planning and being more aggressive with our uh, redevelopment and renovation work, uh, but it really is both of those two phenomena, loss of value and loss of livable units. And, sir, you talked earlier this week about $100 million uh, in property tax loss since um, 2008, 2009? 2009, right, Rick. And the issue is that it, it, the model's broken, and it's just not Detroit, Wayne County, uh, Flint, right. or Grand Rapids. It's across the state uh, that you see. And it, in essence, you're seeing two tails, uh, not really of two cities, but state versus uh, local municipalities. The state's done a, a good job of its revenue, and you see that it's, uh, you see a line, the revenue you'd be seeing and stability would be going up like this. Uh, local municipalities, counties, villages, uh, uh, townships and things, you'd see their revenue lines going down like this. And it's because in 2009, primarily, we depend on property taxes. 2009, there was a crash. The Constitution and Proposal A always anticipated that property values would always go up. The model was never set up. Well, what happens when you have this draconian shift where, the, where it goes down at this point? 
As I said, Wayne County lost $100 million in value of the property tax, or $100 million from the devaluing of the property taxes mm -hmm. uh, from 2009. The problem with the model is that we can't catch up until 2025. By that I mean because of the Constitution, we're limited to 5% a year. If suddenly the housing market were to dramatically turn around, we were to go to the 2009 uh, housing values as they were, because of the Constitution, we're limited to 5% every year. Of, uh, that's the most we could capture. It'd take Wayne County to 2025 to get to where we were in 2009. The model doesn't work anymore. So we gotta have a proposal A moment uh, for all the local municipalities across the state to say, we gotta fix this. Uh, it, it gets into other areas, and just real quick, for example, uh, the state with its financial stability, they're able to bond. Go talk to your regional banks. They mostly get their bonding uh, from local municipalities. I'm talking about uh, you know, uh, counties, uh, cities, and things like that. And their concern is the stability of the local municipalities. That's what a lot of banks in Michigan, especially regional banks, depend on. And they're not able to do it. Uh, at this point. So you might have some of the bigger banks in New York that are able to come in and bond in, with the state of Michigan, but locally, the regional banks aren't able to do it because of the financial crisis that all the communities are facing, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. So that speaks to the very thing we're talking about only on the instability side. Uh, Director Nixon, talk a little bit about where you believe the state is, and any of you feel free to chime in on any of this at any time. No, that's great. You know, we, we had a very difficult decade here in Michigan. We lost over 800,000 jobs. And that impacted our local governments, it impacted our state government, it impacted all of us, you know, from front to front to bottom. Um, in 2011, when we came in, when Governor Snyder took took over as governor, uh, the state was not healthy. the The financial situation of the state was was in was in trouble. We had a billion and a half dollar structural deficit, meaning every year we had kind of just moved things and done different things to balance the budget on a on a on a one year basis. We had $2 million on a rainy day fund, enough to operate government for 30 minutes. And we had post-retirement liabilities that were strangling the system, not just the state system, but our school system. And so we went about systematically fixing these, these, each of these areas. In the first budget we put out, we made difficult decisions. We cut the budget and brought it into structural balance, which has really allowed us these last two years to make strategic investments back into the system. So the first step was to reset the table. Okay, we didn't want to keep playing catch up like most states and most governments are doing. And so we cut the budget, we put it into structural balance, we uh, started to reform our liabilities. And we cut over $20 billion off of our unfunded post-retirement liabilities between the state system and the school system. These were, were systems that were strangling our budgets. And then we've started to invest for a rainy day. And so we made difficult decisions. The legislature's made some difficult decisions. Uh, but really today we're in a position where we've created a better business environment. We're not operating in crisis management anymore. We're in a stable environment. We're getting our budgets done earlier. School districts know what they can count on from the state. Local governments know what they can count on from the state. Everybody who we do business with. And that creates an opportunity for people to grow and expand in, in our state. So as you can see, our revenues are starting to come back. And that doesn't just help state government, it helps local governments through constitutional revenue sharing as well. Now uh, we added some money there, and um, you know it's gonna take some time. We're not gonna come out of this. We didn't go into this overnight, but we had to, we had to reset the stage. And as we grow back out of this, we need to start making strategic investments back into key areas so we can be the robust Michigan that we once were. I, I know we can jump in, and, 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 and the state has done a great job of stabilizing itself, but they have certain resources they're able to do that, quite frankly, the local municipalities are not able to do. And, and that's what's causing a lot of this gulf at this point. Uh, the same is what the state did. We, everybody tries to reset. I can show you that Wayne County went from 5,300 employees to 3,500. Everybody's had a 10% pay cut. Right. We've reduced our uh, health care from $16,000 per employee down to $7,000 uh, per employee. So we continue to do those kind of things. The problem is you can't cut your way out of it. The state had the ability, and they, they've gone in, and they've been able to raise revenue uh, in, in terms of what's been able to help them. And the growth of the economy, the way it's happened is that it has benefited the state. 
When Ford adds 1,000 uh, uh, workers from Mexico at the Wayne Assembly Plant, 1,200 workers to the Flat Rock Plant, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the one in Dearborn uh, increased, I think, uh, close to 1,000. All those people that are signed up, they pay state income tax. All of that goes. When Ford gives that bonus of $8,000 per employee, they go out and they buy things, and that 6% sales tax goes to the state. So they're, they're able, you know, it, it, the growth happens, and it happens, happens with the state. The problem is, is that when you look at the revenue sharing, the commitments that were made years ago, if those commitments would have been kept, you wouldn't even have an uh, emergency manager in Detroit today. Uh, because the revenue stream that was promised that should have been coming through the, through the revenue sharing hasn't occurred, has dramatically gone down. And I realize it was tough times for the state and things that happened with things like that. But we're asking, you know, the commitment was that this would come to this certain point. You've had the advantage of raising certain of the revenues that you've been able to do, which we just don't have at this point. I want to come back to, to the, what you said uh, about the revenue sharing and the effect of the EM. But Mr. DeVos, I want to get mm -hmm. to you because I want to start the table of where we are. So and, and feel free to respond to any of this. But yeah, I'd also like to get your take on the business climate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, you're very interested and involved in that. And like to get your take on where it is as business is looking at Michigan. Well, I, I think businesses look at, at Michigan and we don't see the same border, borders right. or barriers. Right. And so it's really easy to draw lines and say, well, you got to you know, get from this pot to this pot or this pocket to this pocket or this revenue stream and this cost stream. Mm -hmm. Businesses look back and say, what's the overall environment? And so our desire is to, is to have a better environment. And that's for businesses located in the city, in the county, in the state. We're all, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how the business community looks at it and say, what is going to happen to address some of these issues and, and not in a way that says, well, here's, you know, here, here's the path. We are where we are. And I think from a business perspective, we are where we are. Businesses want some level of stability. We want some level of predictability as, as to what's going to happen going forward. What are the services that government's going to provide? And, what, you know, and then the discussion of what should they provide, what shouldn't they provide, and you know, to, to kind of have that piece go along. Be, because I, I think we also see, see the role of government as important, but we need to have some level of agreement of what that role is so the business community can fulfill our role in the community, provide jobs, economic growth, economic opportunity, and things like that. But I, I, the big thing I'm hearing here is to kind of step back a little bit and mm -hmm. say, we're all in this together. The counties, states, yeah. cities, business community, we want to make it better for the citizens of Michigan. And, uh, and we need to have these discussions and solve these issues like the panel before. I love that. Just the visual of them all being together does my heart good. And uh, to know that they're meeting and talking about some of these things is a good positive direction. Here, here's one example. Let me give sure. one example Please, to yeah. make this specific. Uh, public safety. This is something that's yeah. uh, it's a number one priority for every citizen, every family, every business I talk to in the, in the city. Uh, we are average at best. In Michigan, I don't think we want to be a state that's average no, no, no. across the board. Uh, we have central cities uh, that are uh, consistently being ranked as some of the most violent per capita in the country. And that trend over the last 10 years, you know, public safety is a collective responsibility. We have state police, we have sheriff's deputies, we have local law enforcement. And the state police numbers are down, although they've been stepping back up the last couple investing. years with the recovery. Yeah. Uh, we're down uh, with less than 50% of the force that we had 10 years ago. Collectively, the state has 15% uh, fewer police officers and firefighters than it did. So, I mean, that's just one example. That's a specific service that's very high priority for all of us. It's a collective enterprise, and, and we've really been degraded over the last 10 to 12 years. So, you know, that, that's the kind of issue that gives us a, a specific point to say, how do we build a better, safer Michigan? How are we all going to play a constructive role in that? And that? You can't do it if everybody's budget's getting smaller each year. And that's a huge, that's a huge business decision, right. because if you can't keep your employees yeah. safe, you can't operate yeah. in those sorts of locations. And so it's a, you know, whether it's here or even globally in some situations yeah. where you make decisions to move because of that. But then the question comes, how do you prior, if that's a priority, it, and then it? where else in the budget do you shift something mm -hmm. to, to make sure? Where is the list of this is number one, this is number two, which is what we try to do you know, in, in our business anyway. And what I want to do when we get back towards the end of this conversation, we're going to talk about hopefully some tangible things that you can do at the city and you can yep. do at the county, the state, and business. But if I can, I'd like to move forward just a minute because we're rapidly yep. running out of time. 
Tell me quickly, if you can, as we move through this one, from a business standpoint, starting with you, Mr. DeVos, what does financial stability look like? Because if I would have come to you, and you might not have agreed, but if you and I had this conversation in 1998, sure. I would have said, we're great. Yeah. GM can't sell, I mean, they can't make enough cars yeah. to sell. People are being hired at fast food establishments at twice the minimum wage because they can't find enough workers. The state's got tons of money. Things are going along fine, and three years later, that was not the case. Yeah, financial stability, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I would say to us, looks like it, you know, it's not just a point in time. It's not just one report. It's a, over the long term, and it's throughout the, the, all the financial statements mm -hmm. that, that are there. So you have to look not just on your operating side. you got to look on the balance sheet side. you got to look at your future liability side. you got to make sure that over the period of time, all those things are in balance, and all the structural issues primarily Everyone accepts that there's going to, you know, something unexpected is going to happen. The structural issues, if there are those sorts of structural problems in place that aren't being talked about, that aren't being addressed, that are getting kicked down the road, that doesn't save financial stability. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not solved, if they're being addressed and they're being talked about and people are working through them in a collaborative way, that starts to say it's becoming more stable. At least there's hope of it getting there. But I, I think you, for financial stability, it looks like it's long term. That, mm -hmm. that, uh, that's the best way I could say it. Director Nixon, what does it look like from a state perspective? You know, I, 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 I have the opportunity of working for a CPA, the governor, and uh, he understands financial stability as do I. And really, that's why we really started taking a longer term approach. You know, we, every year we put out the budget, we put out a two year budget. You know, to make sure we're not kicking the can, that we're addressing the problems, that we're in structural balance. In fact, he's now got me working on 40-year projections mm. to show these long-term liabilities, to look at the balance sheet. Because in government, it's too easy when you take a one-year snapshot to kick the can. I mean, I could balance any budget for a year. But really looking long-term and saying, what are we doing? How do we look in year two, year three, year four? Because what we need to do is we need to start linking our policy decisions with our ability to fund those policy decisions. And I don't care where, where you are in state government, whether you're working with the local governments, wherever you are, we should make sure that we're identifying the funding for the decisions we're making. So from a state perspective, the state's finances are in order. You know, we got a rating upgrade, things are on the right track. But we are the state of Michigan. We've got a lot of local governments that we work with as well. And so we're not done until we have a whole comprehensive fiscally stable climate in Michigan because, you know, we're as strong as our local governments are. And so mm -hmm. we really, address the state budget first, we're in balance, we're much better situated to deal with, with revenue growth and then working with our partners, with local governments, with K-12, with higher ed, with all the people that we do business with. So the good news is, is that we're in structural balance and as revenues are starting to grow now, we can prioritize that spending. What a lot of governments are trying to do is they're trying to grow their way out of this recession. And those governments that are trying to grow their way out of this recession are gonna be playing catch up for years and years to come. Which is diametrically opposed, I think, to what you said, Mr. Fakana, because you said you can't cut your way out of the problems at the county level. But what would stability look like if you, know, if you, if you look out 10 years and say, we want to stabilize county finances, what would it look like? In Wayne County's uh, aspect, we would, uh, you would look at, obviously, the legacy costs. You would look at uh, obvious things such as health care costs and, and predictability. And knowing what I know about business, not, not as much as, you know, Mr. DeVos or some of them, but being on seven trade missions to China and Europe and, and some of the other locations, business wants stability. They want predictability. They want to know that if I locate my business here five years from now, I have predictability of what my services are going to be and a pretty good idea of what it's going to cost me. Uh, to put it into the model. And we all know that government doesn't create the jobs. It's up to us to create the environment for businesses to want to be able to flourish and to be here. We get that. I mean, Aerotropolis and Wayne County and a lot of other things that, that we look at uh, in the process. The thing, in, in getting to Mr. Nixon's point, to prioritize what we do then, to look down the future, to me, we have to realize where, where do most of these services come from? And a lot of it obviously comes from the local municipalities. There's 43 communities in Wayne County. Biggest one, obviously, is the city of Detroit. If someone has a crime going on you know, next door at their house or somebody's breaking in, or whether it's Livonia or Detroit, when you dial 911, you don't get the state police. You get the local police department that is supposed to respond and to come. Education, I know there's a lot of discussion on education and things like that. But if, I'm, if my child is in a school district, 
and I'm having problems with that teacher, I don't go to the State Board of Education and say, I got a problem, uh, something's happening here. I go to the local school board or principal or, or wherever it is and say, I got a problem that I need to be addressed. So when we're talking about what's gonna be prioritized and looking down the future, realize that most of the services that businesses, your employees, and those that are gonna depend on are probably gonna come from the local municipalities uh, that are going to eventually service them because they're the ones that happen. And, and there's great partnerships that we could have with the state that you know, work together. For example, the two biggest problems that we have in the criminal justice system in Wayne County are uh, evaluations for competency. We would love more psychiatrists to be hired by the state police so that we can speed up the competency uh, hearings uh, so that people don't sit in the jail for four or five months waiting to see if there's a competency, whether they can go to trial. Also <laughs> forensics. We would love the state police to have a bigger budget or a, a way that they can partner with us so that people aren't waiting six months for their trial for the, the DNA uh, to be grown, although it only takes 10 days, but the cases are so backed up. Those are the type of partnerships. And when we look, talk about uh, tranquility and predictability, those are the type of things that would help us, you know, at least in large urban uh, counties or circumstances like this. And, and you just say, because that goes across all the boundaries. Oh, good. You know, everything you talked about is the interconnectedness and, and the way the interdependency that we have. So that, that's why I, I love seeing all of, all of you here in this sort of a forum because, you know, let's solve those things. And, and sometimes it's as simple as just calling the meeting. What we found in our company when things go wrong is just call the meeting so we get everybody around a table and start putting them out there even if we don't have the solution yet, even if we don't know exactly what we're going to do or, or even what we're up against but just having the time to be together. Yeah, you know, be, you know it, it, it's interesting, you've got Mr. DeVos here saying for the business community, we really don't care about the jurisdictions. Right. You know, in, in Michigan we have over 1,800 forms of government. Mm -hmm. We have over 500 school districts. And I think like uh, Mr. Ficano said here, you know, we need to do things better. You know, we need to be partnering. Do we need, can we share services? You know, with the state, if we build an IT backbone, can local governments partner with that? With our public safety, can we be leveraging our public safety? Do we have to have so many 911 call centers? You know, the business community, the public doesn't care, but we've built a very, very expensive system in our state. And we've, been, we've had a lot of money to do it in the past. We don't have that money nowadays going forward. So we've got to fundamentally rethink these things. And we need to start coming to the table, state, locals, 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 states, and other states, and say, you know what, people don't care about boundaries. You know, technology is not bound by boundaries. Why are we setting up IT, you know, thousands of different IT infrastructures? So we need to start looking at those, partnering and leveraging our resources in a positive construction way, a constructive way for the taxpayers and the people who live in the state. Before we move on to the takeaway and how we might start achieving that, we're already starting to hear some good suggestions. I'm going to bridge into that because yep. I spend a lot of time in my job being a, a smaller and a mid-sized city. Uh, you know, our population is cut in half in the last 40 years, but the population of Genesee County has actually been stable. So that tells you a lot about what's happened. We have a, a, an inherent relationship between our cities, counties, regions, and then the state. Uh, what I really think we need to do is we need to take a step forward beyond partnership and really think about integrated systems. Mm. Uh, th this is a big challenge for a lot of us in how we do work, and it would be a big uh, challenge for our state leadership. Uh, John, when you look at the budget numbers and the trajectory, I would like you to see that total cost of government mm -hmm. and see not only the, the state track, because it's true, sales and income taxes have rebounded more quickly in this recovery, so that state number is going up, but our numbers are still going down, mm -hmm. and we need to put those two lines together and talk about now what are we going to do to fix that you know, long term. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's really, I, I think, our next step because we have to have stable local, county, state government. We're really all one operation. It's, this is dimensions of the same system. This isn't a state, federal, constitutional difference. This is, this is where the authority for the emergency manager law comes from. Local governments are creatures of the state. We're governed by state law. So state leadership needs to, to make a shift into thinking not just about the state budget and the state education allocation. We need to create some systems that get us past that. I really think that's the next you know, challenge for us. And whichever you know, legislative candidates and gubernatorial candidates make that case in 2014, I think voters are, are ready to respond to that. 
So that would be the first takeaway from the mayor of Flint, to integrate, take a look at the total cost of government. Uh, what, from your standpoint, Mr. DeVos, do you do to get to that, again, that long range thing? Because the, the, the question, not that it will be answered today, but the suggestion that any and all of you throw out there that could be the beginning of that process is obviously so when you guys are a whole different panel is sitting here in 15 years, you can say, well, over the last 15 years, things in Michigan have been stable or growing and the, you know, the jobs are up, business relocation are up, counties have uh, good finances, cities have good public safety, the state is uh, functioning well and has some reserve. I assume that's what everyone mm -hmm. would like to see. Sure, sure. So I, I think some of, some of the first things to do and, you know, is, is, to, is to step back and say, what's the vision? What are we trying to accomplish? What's our purpose and what's our role? And really understand that. We, we had to go through that as a company. We've had our booms and busts. And when we came back, okay, what are, what are we doing? Just because we can do 100 things doesn't mean we want to do 100 things or that we're mm -hmm. capable of doing 100 things well. Let's, you know. Maybe we can do three to five things well, whatever, whatever that may be. And, and so I think, the, I think the first step is to get really clear on that role. And, and then on your priorities. And, and you got to list them one to two, and we're going to get this done and get this done. And before you add something on the list, either something's going to have to come off or you're going to get an additional resources to do it. And, and I think there's, some, there's just some, there's some financial disciplines that you know that the business community is in place has in place generally uh, because you know leadership is around there generally a bit longer you know and, and you, you start with the customers and you work back and, and so you know, rather than you know rather than having a, a grouping of tactics that that come together and over time any organization especially businesses uh, have the same challenges that you have because you've been doing stuff for a long time and you've had a good period of time and you've had a nice boom cycle so it's okay it's all working and, and then when the you know the income shuts off well you know that's the time I, I would suggest that you really have the chance to go back get that restructuring in place and then challenge yourselves on a regular basis and put the pieces in place to make sure you never get out of balance in the boom times ahead that you you, you do a better job planning and, and, and implementing it from there. So I mean, that planning and prioritization has been, been really key in Flint. Uh, we, unfortunately, I mentioned that the city had gone through a state takeover 10 years ago. We came out of that without uh, having had to adopt a comprehensive master plan. So the city of Flint had been out of compliance with the state's fairly weak um, planning laws for local municipalities since 1960, unfortunately. Uh, we're just behind Detroit with putting our long-term comprehensive plan in place, and I really applaud the Detroit leadership and community for coming together around that. I mean, we, we need to have some stronger uh, leadership and enforcement, frankly, not just on the financial side, but also on the planning side of this integrated operation so that our municipalities, our regions, counties, and the state are all you know, working together in a way that makes sense for our communities long term. And in Flint, we've just been way, way off track. Some other communities, thankfully, have done a better job, but that's something we, we all need to do um, to move this forward. Mr. Ficano, talk to me about Wayne County and what you would like to see that would happen that you believe would help lead to that financial stability. And you've already mentioned some things. You'd, you'd like to see revenue sharing. Uh, that, that's one thing. But you know, to, to track back and you say, how can you look down and have a vision and what does everybody want to see You know, five to 10 years? The very first step we have to do is make sure that there's trust between the local governments and the state. And by that I mean, because some of this is going to be hand-holding, we're, we're taking a leap of faith on what's going to happen. Uh, I'll give you an example, is personal property tax. We know that in 2014, there's going to be a referendum on them. It's, and that's, that's a lot of revenue that comes into local uh, municipalities and, and counties and things like that. And it is a bad tax, I mean, in terms of business. No, no business likes it. When we recruit business, we know they don't like it. The problem is, is that we know it's going to be phased out after 10 years. We don't know if there's going to be a replacement or how is it going to be worked out that that revenue is going to at least be neutral for the local municipalities. Yeah. 
our own experience in the past has been, and I can think of the Third Circuit Court. Now this wasn't under Mr. Nixon, this wasn't under Governor Snyder, but the courts used to be a complete state responsibility, the circuit courts. They go and they separate it and they said to Wayne County, guess what, now you have a, now it's 85 to 100 million dollar liability, we'll start, you know, we're gonna give you some money the first couple years, oh by the way, after that, the 100 million dollars is on your books and you gotta now, you know, fund that circuit court. That doesn't make a great atmosphere for trust in terms of we're saying here, we had this responsibility before, we've given it to you, we don't really have any bridge money except for a couple of years, and now you, you're caught with the responsibility. I don't want the same thing to happen on the personal property tax, mm -hmm. so the first thing you gotta do is have trust and say, we know, here's the predictability of what's gonna happen five to 10 years uh, from now to either have that as a replacement or, or work together. So. I think that you know, the ability is there, like Mr. DeVos, Mr. Nixon, and the mayor said, we can get together and say, we can solve these problems. There's a lot of intelligent people that are able to attack this problem. Get it together, let's have the predictability, not only for the business, but also for you know, government and what its game plans are gonna be so that business can flourish uh, in, in the state. Director Nixon, from the state standpoint, I suspect you believe you've already taken some of the steps for financial stability going forward, but what more can you do? And if you would address what uh, both the mayor and, and Mr. Fricano are talking about a little bit in that cooperative nature, because it does seem that while the state, uh, as both of them have described, as you have talked about many times, has started on a good trajectory uh, from a financial standpoint, that there certainly is a pretty big discrepancy between mm -hmm. what's happening, and, and, and we should point out and one of the things that I, I, I didn't want to leave without saying is that we may have gotten into this as a state earlier than, yeah. than other places because obviously our economy started to turn south, but every state in the country is having a right. discussion like right. this. It's not, this is not Michigan did something wrong. Mm -hmm. This is Michigan is trying to do something right. Yeah. Yeah. And with all of these folks helping your help, they'll do it. So don't walk out of here saying, oh man, that's a mess. No, it's not. That, there are, the unfortunate part is there are a lot of states that aren't having the conversation. Mm -hmm. So the fact that all these folks are here having the conversation really puts us a leg up. And so with all of that as a background, talk to me a little bit about what the, the state would do from your perspective to become more stable into the future. Well, I think from, you know, times have been tough. And, and, and again, you're right, Rick, I talked to budget directors all over the country. We're all facing the same, similar situation. What we need to do is we really need to partner together. You know, when, when you look at the current state, when we came in, we had a tax system that was broken. We had to revamp that tax system. It was built on a tax system of the old Michigan. You know, the governor ran on reinventing Michigan. And so we put in a new tax system. We've done budget reform. We've done pension reform. We've done all of these things. You put in a new state reinvent. tax system. But what, and what I'm saying is oh. the, the revenue future. Is everything perfect right now? Back, 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 back. Is everything perfect right now? No, we still have a lot of work to do. But again, when we came in, we had to reset the table. Now we've got to work with, the, with our partners and we need to figure out how we can all come out of this together. One of the things that, that is strangling everybody, again, I, I alluded it to before, but going back to what Mayor Walling said, he's got 2,000 retirees he's supporting with an active workforce of 500 people. The state has a workforce of 56 or uh, 50,000 employees. We've got a retired workforce of about 57, 58,000 employees. Now these are benefits that haven't been funded in the past. And so all at once, these local governments and the state government we're having to, to, to play catch up here, and it's very difficult. So you have the perfect storm. You have declining revenues, you have people retiring, mm -hmm. you have two different workforces that you're supporting, and those are the things we need to look at. But I would agree with the mayor and, and, and the, uh, Mr. Ficano here. You know, we need to look at how we can better fund, Now we need to look at how we can, can raise the bar here in the state. Mm -hmm. But the first step was to get back in an environment of stability. You know, businesses aren't going to relocate to a, to a state that has an unstable tax system. They're not going to grow in a state that has an unstable tax system. Businesses aren't going to re, uh, come to a state that's got a government that's perpetually operating in a deficit because we threatened to, to increase taxes. And we, we needed to reset that table. We've done that. And we didn't come into this overnight. Now we need to take, take steps that are well thought out. We need to partner together, and we'll come out of this thing. 
but it's going to take some time. In the city of Flint, you already talked about some yeah. of the things that you'd like to see, but, but address two things. Right. What would look financially stable and how do you get there? I mean, mm -hmm. we've already talked about what it would look like. How do you get there? And expand a little bit on what you just yeah. mentioned with the state changed the tax system for the state, but it didn't necessarily right. change for municipalities right. or for right. counties. I think it, it, I, I wake up every day on fight like hell for our community uh, with the recognition that Flint can't do this by itself. I mean, it, it truly does have to be um, a partnership with county government, with the private sector, with the state, because that's where so many of the rules of this game get set. So um, we, we need to get our entire public system to a more stable point. And this is where, you know, from, from my desk, I see a different view than, than John does at the state. There are more than 100 local government or school districts that have audited deficits on the books that Treasury has to you know, monitor. They're just, there has been a major disconnect, and we haven't had the, the reforms and the responsibility that we need across all of our um, sub-state units of government, and that, that really has to be what we do next. Uh, we need a new 21st century uh, way to you know address these public services wherever wherever they land. I'm very much a mayor who's in favor of more authority and services uh, being done at the county level. I actually think we shouldn't wait around for a thousand different municipalities to agree that counties should do assessing and equalization and tax collections. The state should require it. Uh, we don't have time for every uh, township um, government to agree under an EVIP type arrangement. This is the, the program where we get some of our former statutory revenue sharing by meeting some uh, criteria. We don't have time for that discussion to take place in a thousand different communities. I mean, we need to go in and say, this is the, the role for counties in the 21st century. This is the role for, for cities, for townships, and lay all that, all, all that out. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of discussion, but this is what I think we have to do, and I'm just uh, working from my experience, talking to local business owners and families again, yeah, they don't see the distinctions between these different entities. They want a safe community for their kids. They want a great place for their kids or grandkids to go to school. And we need to have more focus on that and build the systems and the data and the metrics that can help us track and, and improve that over time. Right. I'm under no, no illusion that this is going to you know, happen in the next 12 months. And it's certainly not, uh, I hope it doesn't come off as uh, something specific to this administration. I uh, use that 10 year time frame to show that there, there's been uh, folks on both sides of the aisle at a lot of different levels of government that, that haven't uh, been willing to deal with this the way it needs to be. Any, anybody can take this from your perspective. Gauge for me the flexibility in the minds of folks at the city level, folks at the county level, the township level, there's going to be pushback. When you start, you know, those folks who are involved in those township governments uh, are very proprietary. Well, that's true because so are the what, cities too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, but, but that's the what question. They, how much, our how townships much are, are filled with residents who consumed a service in the city of Flint 20 years ago and then left their legacy costs with us and moved out to a community that they now believe can provide them for a better, cheaper service. Well, that's true because the legacy cost is left with us. So we need to, we need to force that conversation about um, cooperation and about doing, uh, you know, providing for these services at a, at a reasonable uh, geographic scale. It can't be this city versus that township. Nobody wants to lose their identity. No township, no city, no, no community wants to lose their identity. But you can have the discussion of saying, what does that mean? If my identity, you know, like the school mascot, they never go after the school mascot, right? <laughs> so, but what does that mean? Does that mean you have to have your own IT system, your own finance system, your own HR system? Absolutely yeah. not. All that backroom stuff as a company, every market we deal with has its own identity. We have to meet the customers in that market, but all the back end stuff that the customers don't see, that's all going to come together to be the most effective, most efficient that it can be. And so I just say from, the, from, a, you know, from a business community perspective, I think we're trying to do a better job of giving good input. We're trying to do our best. And we also want to make sure that, and, and the Detroit Regional Chamber does a great job in kind of leading that and bringing the, the state community together in that front. But as well, I, I think the more we get involved, 
the more impressed we are with the people on the stage and the people in government who are working hard, our elected representatives and, and professionals who are working hard and trying to solve these things. And we just want to keep the partnership, build the trust, and, and, and find the solutions. Does the, does the state have, and I hear varying stories, but you talk about IT. Does the state of Michigan have a centralized IT system, or is it all broken up in silos? No, we're centralized. In fact, I run that department, mm -hmm. and we've created uh, innovation funds where we can partner with local governments. We've our, our CIO, who was just here this morning, is working with uh, different local CIOs in how we can leverage a stronger IT backbone. We've created a virtual city where uh, cities can start getting their, their, their back office functions taken care of in a partnership way. You know, Rick, I think it's important. We've had a great discussion here. We need to keep in mind that we just came through a huge recession. We lost over 800,000 jobs. The reason property taxes are down is because people have, have left the state and that people can't sell their houses. The reason taxes are down are because people have lost jobs. And so what we need to do is create an environment where that starts to come back. But what's happening is we're not going to be able to just, this isn't an issue where we can just throw more money at it. Because we can't get the more money. We're, the, the state has come through a very difficult period. But what we're in a position to do is to get together as governments and say, how can we best take care of the taxpayers and the people we serve in a very efficient and effective way? And I think that what's important is that we have this dialogue so we can come up with a plan. And we're trying to do it from our department through technology and whatever else we work with to work together. And, and we've got a long way to go, but we've got the, we, we've got the ability to do it. Give me a 20-second takeaway from everybody as we wrap this up. Well, I, th I think you've heard the common concern from all of us. So you know, the work's cut out for us, and now we have to, you know, we have to go after it. It is going to mean that, that people are going to have to you know, recognize they're not going to do every service or every function that they used to when you look at this whole system. Um, we've got to find the right place where it makes the most sense, and then we're going, to, we're going to have to fund it. I mean, public safety is a good example because you can get more efficient with technology, you can respond a little faster, but at the end of the day, what we all know we want in our communities are individuals trained and available to respond when we have an emergency situation. And we're going to have to invest in, in that system to get it back to where it needs to be. We have to be willing to identify the problem, put a huge spotlight on it, and have the political will to solve it. And it's not a state, local, whatever issue. We have to work together to get it done. Mr. Fikano. Sure. I think sometimes our constituents are ahead of us even in, in government. Uh, yeah. Look at the tri-county area. People cross boundaries all the time to worship, to shop, or they work. If you look at it, I think 60% of the people in uh, Oakland County uh, work in Wayne County or Macomb County. It, 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 it's all, you know, uh, together. And I can tell you from a service standpoint, if uh, someone is breaking into my house in Detroit, they don't care if it's a brown uniform, a blue uniform, a state Just police there. Uh, uniform. They want somebody to respond and to get there. If we keep that as the, the mantra that we can work together, uh, I think we can solve a lot of problems. Yeah. Sure. I, just breaking down silos. I think you're hearing it here because when you do that, when you get around the table and you put the, the, the big issues out there, and now you have the, the ability to, to, you know, to build trust because you're working to solve a problem. And everybody's idea is important. So we're all in this together. And, and you know, we're all going to share a bit of the problem but we're all the, the piece of the solution as well. And I think that's, uh, that's what, and we want to be a part of it in the business community too. And part of that solution Excellent. starts with all of you sitting down and taking time to exchange ideas, talk about common ground, ground where you may be able to develop that. I appreciate very much you taking the time. I really want to thank the Detroit Regional Chamber yeah, for absolutely. what I think has been a really spectacular week up here. I think they've done a great job.